you shivered uncontrollably, jaws set so tight it was painful as you paced your torn apart room. The stress ran so deep in the hollows of your bones, you were certain it would live with you forever, dipped and curved around your spine like a smothering hug. You didn't know what to do. Tears stained your face in a repetitive cycle. Pace, stress, cry, back and forth like a seesaw. It hurt, but beyond that, it sank destroyed every ounce of positivity you'd worked so hard to keep close over the past few weeks. Any form of peace was shattered the moment you even caught a glimpse of it, and the tears started anew as you buried your face in your hands. A knock at the door suddenly pulled you from your thoughts, reminding you that despite the loneliness drowning your mind, you were not actually alone. Not physically, at least. Cracking open the door you found. Tamaki fidgeted nervously in front of the door, with an overwhelmingly large bag in his arms as his worried eyes met yours. <laughs> Hi, Bunny, he said quietly doing his best to keep his shoulders straight, his voice even. He wanted to be reassuring, but you could feel the panic rolling off of him in waves, for your own well-being instead of his. You could barely speak, but stood aside to let him in, and he was quick to dig through the bag and start pulling out all your favorite films. And a ridiculous amount of popcorn. I thought we could have a... Movie night, to take your mind off everything. He tried, giving you a slight smile, and it took everything in you not to rush into his arms right there. Thanks, Tamaki, you said instead. And the burden felt a whole lot lighter all of a sudden. You were quick to reward him with kisses all over his quickly blushing face. Bakugo was frowning, but gently, almost concernedly. If one could frown in care, anyways. He was empty-handed, but dressed comfortably, and he was quick to push through the door and survey your shaking form. Without a word, he pulled you close to his chest, arms tight around your waist as he hummed soothingly in your ear. <sighs> You're all right, princess. It's all right. He said softly, voice low, a gravelly softness to his usually harsh tone. It was enough to make you start crying all over again, but this time you had Kutsuki's hands rubbing your back and petting your hair, whispering soft words in your ear as he kissed your temple. You're the strongest person I know. I love you. You're gonna kick this sad shit's ass. The words were comforting, in Bakugo's sort of way, but it helped immensely. And before long, he got you giggling in his arms as he threatened your sadness in increasingly violent ways, determined to see you smile. You could see bright red hair and spiky teeth through the crack in the door. Kirishima's worried face attempting to squeeze near yours despite the obvious wooden block. Are you alright, baby doll? You didn't answer any of my texts, so I figured it was a bad day. I bought all your favorite snacks and I thought we could have a board game night. I have Uno, Go Fish, Monopoly, Cards Against Humanity... 
His rambling was too sweet to cut off, watching as he talked himself nearly to death as you opened the door wider. You were not even crying anymore, too busy giggling at Kirishima's confused expression as he explained the absolute struggle he had trying to find all the games. Are you... feeling better? He asked, concern still lacing his brow as you tugged him closer. <laughs> Much. All thanks to you. You hummed, hugging him tightly, and he was quick to hug you back with a cheery smile. Awesome! <laughs> but I haven't done anything yet. He had done more than he realized, and you told him you were so over Monopoly. Kaminari's arms were full, his gaming system and every video game he's ever owned double wrapped in Sero's tape as he precariously balanced everything. Hi, baby! Please let me in before I drop and damage my very expensive system! He said cheerfully, already halfway through the door as you quickly let him in. He dumped everything on your bed, sorting through a mess of wires as you stared incredulously at his back. I figured we could have a gaming day. I've got snacks too, somewhere. Unless I left them back there. Uh. He didn't mention your tear-stained face, instead leaning down to press a kiss to your lips gently. Thought you could use a distraction, you know? It was sweet and very incredibly Kaminari, and you smiled as you cuddled up to his side. You knew he wouldn't force you to speak, giving you time, something you appreciated more than you could say. Instead, you pressed a kiss to his cheek, smiling a little wider. Thanks, Kaminari. You're the best. Sarah was leaning against the doorframe giving you his usual bright smile, despite the worry in his eyes. Hey, sweetheart! Come here often? The joke was terrible, but you couldn't help your giggles, giving Sarah the best side glance you could muster. <laughs> this is my room, Sarah. <laughs> you reminded him, and he pretended to slap a hand against his forehead in mock shock. Of course! Your overwhelming beauty must have confused me. I'm in a daze. I'm lost in your eyes, maybe? He wiggled his eyebrows suggestively, and you outright laughed, tears long forgotten at his antics. I thought you'd want to have a cuddle and jam session. I brought my speaker and my cuddly self, <laughs> he offered and you pulled him into your room by the shirt without hesitation. Sounds perfect, Sarah. Thank you, you said softly, burying your face in his chest. Of course, anything for you, he promised, half teasing and half serious. Todoroki stood firmly in front of your door, worry filling his eyes as he took in your tear-stained face. I understand that speaking about it makes it feel worse, my love, but I am here for you, the same way you always are for me. He spoke, slowly and carefully, attempting to explain his feelings the best way he could. You smiled, a little watery, rubbing your eyes before opening the door. I appreciate that, Todoroki, but it's okay. I'm sure you've got something else you could be doing. 
you said softly, hugging your arms around yourself. He was quick to step inside your room, pulling you close against his chest. Your shivers made him frown, quick to use his quirk to warm you. There is nothing more important to me than your happiness, my love. He assured you, and before you could react, he tucked a hand under your knee to lift you up in a bridal carry, dead set on making your pain go away. And I'm not leaving until you feel better. You wouldn't admit it, but you adored these moments where his sweetness shone through. Cuddles wouldn't fix everything, but they were certainly helpful, and you rewarded him with plenty of kisses. Shoji peered anxiously into your room, wringing two of his hands nervously. His other arms held blankets, tea, and some films, but you were too busy wiping your eyes to notice. Are you alright? I wanted to check on you, but I couldn't decide on the right blankets, and then I couldn't find your favourite movie, so I had to rent it. You smiled a bit, allowing him inside your room easily. <laughs> You're too sweet to me, Shoji. Blankets for what? He set everything down on your bed, before scooping you up in his many arms, hugging you close for a quiet moment. I thought we could make a pillow fort. Those always helped me when I was younger, and I figured you'd appreciate company. Despite his sweet words, he was still a bit nervous, and you could hear it in his voice. He just wanted to help you feel better. That sounds amazing, Sho. Thank you so much. You're the best. You assured him, leaning up to press a kiss to his cheek. Shinso's eyes bored into yours through the cracked door, sighing softly as he saw your teary eyes. <sighs> Let me in, kitten, he said softly, one hand against the door. You listened almost instantly, even without him using his quirk. He was your comfort, through everything. You let him wrap his arms around you held you close, and scattered kisses all over your face with a sniffle. I'm always here for you, kitten. You know that. We'll work through this together, okay? Just his presence was enough to soothe you, and you smiled a bit against his chest. Will you read to me? You asked shyly. His voice had always been soothing, and a cuddle with Shinso as he read aloud sounded like everything you could ask for. Of course, kitty. We'll do anything you'd like until I see that beautiful smile again, he promised, and you offered him a small one in thanks. Kago had an arm against your doorframe, offering you his most winning smirk. I heard there was a pretty little dove in distress, and of course, as a pro hero, I just had to rush over and offer my assistance. He said quite easily, but you didn't miss the concern in his eyes. He had clearly just gotten off patrol, hair a mess and feathers ruffled, and it made your heart go soft. Even after the stress of working, he still made you his top priority. Let me in, chickadee. We don't even have to talk, okay? We can just cuddle and I can woo you with my endless charm. 
he joked, pulling you from your thoughts. It was obvious he was worried, and you let him in without a second thought. How about cuddles, and we watch that trashy show we've been binging? You offered, allowing him to wrap you up in his wings with a little smile. His presence never failed to lift your mood. <laughs> Sounds perfect, my little dove. He smiled, leaning down to peck your lips gently. Midoriya looked nearly teary himself, hands attempting to push the door open as he looked at you. Babe, what's wrong? I've tried to call you, but you haven't answered. Is it bad again? Can we talk about it? His concern was touching, and you quickly wiped your eyes before letting him inside. <sighs> it's fine. Izuku, I'm sorry. You shouldn't have worried about me. You reassured, and he immediately pulled you into his arms to kiss your tear-stained face. I'll always worry about you. I can't help it. I just want to keep you safe and happy. You do. I promise. Can we just... Can we... Cuddle? And maybe talk? Not about this, but... Anything else? You asked quietly, suddenly exhausted. He nodded carefully, lifting you up to carry you to bed. Of course, babe. Can't be the number one hero if my baby's upset. Can I? You laughed softly, burying your face in his neck. <laughs> <sighs> You're always my number one hero, Izuku. Always. <laughs>